How? You want to be invited for a barbecue? <laughs> for me, I'm from South Brazil, close to Argentina, and there our people have a tradition with uh, barbecue with meat, you know? If you have a bunch of people, what are you gonna eat? Barbecue. Not gonna eat the shawai. of the guys in Brazil, we have some, I guess, to defend ourselves, to learn how to, to fight. So I have some cousins, some guys older than me. They already was practicing jiu-jitsu and when we have some troubles outside, they are okay with this. So then I decided to start to be like them. Normally we start there, start jiu-jitsu to learn how to fight and, you know, but then inside the, the martial arts, start to learn other things that jiu-jitsu bring to us to become more confident, more calm and actually you go there to learn how to fight but actually what you learn is to avoid to fight especially outside you know. Actually I'm, sh I w I'm short, I'm not a tall guy and then learn how to fight give me much more confidence you know to, to don't be like bullying or disrespect for anyone. So I didn't have a big size to, to scare anyone but at least knowing jiu-jitsu that gives us a lot of confidence so <laughs> the beard let me more beautiful, you know. Actually, in Brazil, it's not so usual have the beard. So when I move here, I think when I start to see everyone, every man here has a beard, you know. And 2014, maybe or 15, was the first time I let grow just to see how it would be because I never had beard, I never let grow the beard before, you know. And once I let grow, I say, what's well, nice? And I shave one time, and people, no, no, you change too much. Please let the beard back again. And I grew up again. Now I think uh, two years that I don't shave the beard. Actually, in any language, the first thing you learn in the language is the bad words. <laughs> but then start to learn like a small phrase or something like that. Especially working in school, I don't speak Arabic, but sometimes I can understand what about the conversation is. Salam alaikum, shwak barak. Give a halak, saha, saha zen, all good. <laughs> uh, the fact that it's a very safe country. That's why I talk with my son. My son now is a teenager, especially in this age in Brazil, it's a little bit hard for, for when you grow up as a teenager there. Not only Brazil, but many countries. But here you have zero problem. You, you don't need to worry about anything in, related with violence. So that's the most amazing thing here. Ah, every day. That's amazing in Jiu-Jitsu because it's countless techniques. And every day on the mats you learn something. Even one beginner can teach you, even a different grip. Actually, you, you never finish. You learn for all your life. In the beginning, sometimes not so... It's a little bit hard because you don't see the results. You take time, take months to, to see something. To win your first competition, you take maybe more than a year. What I say to them, keep going. Don't stop because sometime you're gonna reach what you want. As you go sleep, you eat, you do you study, you work, and do jiu-jitsu. No, it's crazy because I, I was working. I cannot talk with him, of course. To the referee there, don't feel pressure. Oh, his father, the head referee, is watching. I cannot have him say, no, no. I, I go to another side, you know, I trying to, to be a little bit far from, from the match, but I cannot take my eyes off. So I start to, to, you know, to fight together, to move together. It's hard, it's not simple. Because I see, when you see the fathers on the audience, they are shouting a lot, you know, almost dying there. I, I, I would like to be there, shout with him, but I cannot. No, she's okay. Because, uh, you know, before I was in the school, almost all day, just leave straight to arena until night and stay for the adult train. So all day from seven in the morning until nine uh, over the mats and sometimes the weekends uh, in competitions. So, but that's the life. It's like this since the beginning, so she knows how it works. There's no choice anymore to 20 years, almost 18 years together, so <laughs> no choice anymore. <laughs> Uh, the fathers of the kids outside. <laughs> For example, in a submission hold, we stop before, 
We make everything to, to be a safety place for them. We cannot let any kids get hurt. But the fathers outside, sometimes they don't understand. No, my kid didn't tap. Or uh, my kid's very tough, he would escape from that submission. He should let it go. I, I always say, man, how to, to, to be a referee, blah, blah, blah. It's not only you read the rules book, understand the rules. In the competition, everyone anxious and nervous something. So it's not the, the right time to, to discuss or to talk with someone. I listen sometimes, they say, ask some score or something. But I don't care, you know, there is a filter here. So this is the hardest part to be a referee. You must be the guy to come down and listen. Football, you have, I don't know, 20 cameras around the, the stadium, 50,000 people watching, you have VAR, you have everything. And even like this, people complain. So that's part of the game. I don't, honestly, I don't care too much to football. No, I don't like Neymar, because uh, I fall all the time. <laughs> For the athletes that trying to pass by the rules, come with short gi, long nails, complain with the referee, I will be there to watch you, man. <laughs>